Hi everyone. I thought I'd do a little um, teaching session on flower sack material. I was uh, lucky enough to uh, win a couple of bids on some flower sack pillowcases uh, from a wonderful friend. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, she's down in the southern United States and um, so I got a group of eight in total. There they are there. And how can you tell flower sack pillowcases from just regular material is that here you'll see um, the actual, um, how they threaded the, the, uh, the feed sacks on the top. And then if you look at how it's put together on the sides, um, there's another example here down at the bottom, you can see that this is the original sh uh, shape of the flower sack itself. But I knew that it wasn't just um, flower sacks that were made out of material, and I knew that it wasn't just in the States, and I knew that it was not just pillowcases that were made out of this material. So I wanted to do a little bit of research and just share that, share my findings. So I looked up on the internet, and it turns out that uh, it was around the 19, or excuse me, the 1850s, when uh, everything was shipped overseas uh, in barrels or in boxes and um, yeah I guess wooden, wooden boxes or barrels is how things would be shipped that's how things were stored and then out comes these um, very plain fabric um, feed sacks which um, actually it wasn't just flour um, sugar what I found it was fl uh, sugar, flour, seed, animal feed, fertilizer, hams, sausages, etc. Um, those are what replaced the um, the boxes and the barrels that would be on ships. I found out that uh, these materials were available in uh, the UK, in the United States, and in Canada. And sometimes they differed by regions or like how the patterns would be created. They would, they would be specific to a region, specific to a season. So sometimes you really can place based on, on you know, what material is, is actually on the flower sack or the feed sack or whatever sack you got it from. Where did it come from? And uh, it, it brought a lot of imagination on because uh, they went ahead and made materials. Uh, one of my favorites, if I could have gotten some of that, would have been um, chickens, of course, chickens and roosters as a pattern. But um, imagine having a coverlet or a little dress made out of print that is... Um, Mickey Mouse, or Donald Duck, Alice in Wonderland, and even Gone with the Wind. So the making of these sacks, this material, was actually done right up until about uh, the 1960s when they reverted to uh, paper sacks and plastic, thinking it was more sanitary and was more rodent proof, which is very sad because so many things could be made out of this type of material. Um, I, I was looking on the internet and I saw some amazing pictures of things like dresses, diapers, coverlets, bonnets, aprons. Um, there was a feed sack chair. Somebody had actually taken, like, you know, to take this chair, for instance, take off uh, the material from it, and it could actually use to be redone, you know, because it's got a little bit of bad stuff where it's going on there so you know to so take the material off of here and to cover it with uh, feed sack material and sometimes like if it was a specific logo for um, one flower company or feed company like I put I focus on making the logo right in the met, uh, center of the back so that was kind of cool so some of those pictures are really neat to see even purses as well so really it was just the limits of the ability on the sewing machine was what you, you could just make anything as long as you had the talent to take that material uh, and, and make it into something. So it, it was just really from a time where nothing went to waste. 
especially during the, the Depression period where there was no money. Buying new clothes was out of the question. Nobody had any money, barely even to eat. So you, reusing your flour sack material was, uh, you could even make, I even heard that they, or read that they had were using it on bras, underwear, um, possibly trying it for socks and stockings, but they didn't always fit very well. But you know what? When you have no money, you really just use whatever's, on, whatever's to hand. So anyway, these, um, so these are the eight that I managed to, to win a bit on. They are gorgeous. I'm, I'm afraid to use them. I, I might just go ahead and keep them as display pieces. So, you know, th these, these were, um, Flower sack material was particularly useful during World War II in the UK when rationing wasn't done only uh, for food, but it was also on clothing and how, how long your dresses could be, how wide your dresses could be. There was a severe rationing on that, so um, making a dress out of um, feed sacks was something that was widely done. The the the, uh, the tag was held on just by a little bit of a flower paste, and it even had instructions on it on how to take the label off and, and how to prep it for the use of making garments out of it. So I thought that was very cool. And feed companies, flower companies, whatever, they knew that this was going on, so the, the competition was quite fierce. So they would come up with these amazing patterns for their flour sack, sugar sack, feed sacks, in order that the public would, should buy their products. So that would have been an interesting thing that, you know, you'd have these amazing uh, fabrics or um, patterns to choose from because, you know, the, the companies were catering to the public that really wanted to use it. So you know, the better we make it look, the more they're going to buy, and, and buy our, our product. And you could, a lot of people could tell, the school kids could tell, oh, your, your mom buys uh, such and such brand flower because that's what your dress is made out of. So I, I maybe, you know, that was a little bit embarrassing for the girls maybe at that time. But now that I buy our chicken feed in plastic bags, I get my flour out of paper bags, my sugar also out of paper bags. This to me is like, this we should be going back to this and not being ashamed to do so because it is they are such pretty fabrics i have here a little part of americana history up here in canada which is very cool so anyway that's a little bit of history on feed sacks and uh, when they started um, why they started and how it ended which is very unfortunate I definitely am all for bringing back the use of flower sacks. Take care, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, short documentary.